In this example, we are going to talk about transformations of a linear function. And what that means is we are going to be looking for the shift of a line. Okay, now a shift means we are simply just moving the line. We're not changing its shape. We're not changing any bit of its steepness. We are just moving it. Okay, so that's what a shift is. And we are going to find what is the shift um, and then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to look at steepness of lines and we're going to compare them, okay? So the first thing that we're going to need to know is just um, remembering what function notation is. Remember that f of x and y are the same things. So you're going to see a lot of f of x and g of x. And then we also need to remember what is this form right here? It's slope-intercept form, right? And so slope-intercept form, especially the m value today, um, is the slope, right? Um, you're going to see we're going to be comparing two lines that have the same slope and figure out what is that shift between them. So we need to know which one is the slope. And then do you remember what b is? b is the y-intercept, okay? So um, just remembering that slope-intercept form, remembering that m is slope and b is y-intercept. Um, we'll talk about steepness towards the end, so steepness and absolute value, those will be towards the end. Um, and let's talk about right here, here's your process for finding a vertical shift algebraically. We're going to talk about using a graph, and you can absolutely use a graph. But when we want to do this algebraically with the math, this is where you want to go to see what is that formula, okay, and your process. So let's start by looking at um, doing it with a graph. So I pulled up a graph here, and let me make these smaller so it'll all fit on the page. Um, and so let's do this. Let's graph f of x first. I'm going to graph that in blue. So think about what are the key pieces of information we need for f of x. So we need the slope and the y-intercept, which is our m and our b, right? So my slope here is what? 2, and my y-intercept is negative 5. So I'm going to start with my y-intercept, okay? And I'm going to go down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then my slope is 2, and to make it a fraction, we put it over 1. So remember, slope is rise over run, right? So we're going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Now these little dots in between, that's just so you can see where I'm counting. Um, remember, they're not actually part of your line, okay? And we want to draw our line and put our arrows on the end. And then in this case, we actually want to label this. So I'm going to put an f of x right next to it, okay? And I'm going to get rid of all my added dots here. These are not actually points. These were just so you could see where I'm counting. All right. Okay, so then let's go deal with g of x. And I'm going to do everything with g of x in red. So what is the key information we need for g of x? We need the slope and the y-intercept, so that would be our m and our b, and so m in this case is 2, and b is 1. Now I want you to notice something. Do you see how m in both equations was 2? That means we're not actually changing the shape of the line. The rise over run is going to be the same, okay? What does change is the y-intercept. So this time we're going to start at a positive 1. And we're going to do that rise over run, 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, over and over and over. And then we go backwards, same thing. Do you see, because we did not change the slope, do you see how these lines will never actually touch? Is there any point in which they will touch? No, there isn't. These are what we call parallel lines which we'll talk more about um, in a few lessons. But these 
lines will never touch because we never change the shape. They have the exact same slope. Every time the blue line rises to, the red line will be rising to as well. But what happened? When we are asked here to find the change or the shift from f of x to g of x, and that reminds me I forgot to label my g of x, okay? We've got to find what is the change from f of x to g of x. So let's go start at f of x and look at a point on f of x. I'm going to look at this point right here and see how did that point change going from f of x to g of x. Did it go up or did it go down to get to g of x? That point was moved up. Well, how many spaces was it moved up? One, two, three, four, five, six. It was moved up six spaces, right? So we'll call that a positive six. Let's double check another point just to be sure. If I look at this point, how many spaces did it move? One, two, three, four, five, six. In fact, if you were to check every single point, you would see that each point on f of x was moved up six spaces, right? So if we're going up, Six means that our shift would equal a positive six. Okay, our shift equals a positive six. Now, what we say actually is that k equals a positive six. Okay, k stands for our transformation. You're going to see that a lot this year. All right. So you can do that from a graph. You can absolutely graph it and then count the spaces in between them. Just pay attention from where you're starting. What if we had gone down? If we had gone down six spaces, it would be a negative six, just like with slope. Slope, you count down if it's negative, up if it's positive. Same thing with your transformations. Let's look at it algebraically. So I'm going to take these same two equations and show you how this works algebraically. So look at this formula g of x, which is our new function, is just taking f of x and moving it k number of spaces, up or down. So we are going to look for the value of k. This is our shift. Where did we shift? Okay. So I'm literally just going to take that and plug it in. So we're starting with g of x equals. Well, here's what g of x is. What does g of x equal? It equals 2x plus 1. So instead of g of x equals f of x plus k, for this g of x, I'm going to plug in 2x plus 1 because that's what g of x equals, right? Then it says that g of x equals f of x. Well, what was f of x? f of x equals 2x minus 5. So I'm going to plug in 2x minus 5, and then we can't forget that there's still this plus k. Do we know what k is? Not yet. So we just write down plus k. Now it's asking us for the value of k, so we've got to solve for k, which means I need to move all of this to the other side. So let's start with the 2x. How do I inverse 2x to the other side? I'm going to subtract it. What about the minus 5? How do I inverse a minus 5? We would add 5. Let's look at what happens. Over here, 2x and negative 2x, what happens? They cancel. They're gone. How about the negative 5 and positive 5. They also cancel. It's gone. What do I have left on that side? Just k. Let's look on the other side. What about the 2x and the negative 2x? You could say it makes 0, but really, it cancels. How about the 1 plus 5? So what does k equal? What does that mean? How did we shift f of x to get g of x? Remember, this is a positive 6, so that means it was shifted up 
because it was positive, 6. So k equals 6 was actually your answer to the question, but it means that it was shifted up six spaces. Let's look at another one algebraically. Now, I did put a graph on your handout in case you want to use it to graph and check. That is absolutely fine. You can do it either way. You can graph it or you can do it algebraically, but most students prefer to do it algebraically once they get the hang of it. So let's try it. We're going to start, remember, with that formula, g of x equals f of x plus k. And we are looking for the value of k, right? So let's go substitute. What does g of x equal? Here's g of x, and it equals 1 half x plus 1, negative 1 half x plus 1, sorry, negative 1 half x plus 1. Awesome. Next is f of x. What does f of x equal? Here's f of x, and it equals negative 1 half x plus 6. Awesome. Don't forget plus k. That is our shift, right? So now I need to solve for k. How am I going to inverse this negative 1 half? We're going to add 1 half x to both sides. Now don't be afraid about this fraction, okay? Because remember, why are we adding 1 half x? So that this will cancel, right? Well, where else does it cancel? Look at that, a negative 1 half x and a positive 1 half x. It's the exact same thing. It's canceling. And if you're just doing a vertical shift, if we're just looking for k, they should cancel. Okay, what's the last thing we need to do here? We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. Now, those also cancel, right? So what does k equal? It equals a negative 5. Now, can you tell me what that means? It's a negative, right? And when we're thinking about negative, we're thinking down. So this line has been shifted. f of x was shifted down five spaces, right? f of x shifted down five spaces in order to make g of x. That's what all this means. That's why we're doing this. Cool. Let's look at another one. Try this one and find the value of k for me. Remember, you can always graph it and count the spaces of the shift. So let's try this algebraically. To do this algebraically, you want to start with your formula. So g of x equals f of x plus k. Then what is d of x? Well, g of x equals x plus 2. So we substitute x plus 2, and it equals, what is f of x? f of x is x plus 9. So that goes in for all of f of x. And then don't forget we have the plus k. Then we need to solve for k, so everything needs to move away from it. So we're going to subtract x. And what else do we subtract? 9. So this cancels and this cancels, so k is by itself. And what is k going to equal? It equals negative 7. So what does that mean? Well, k is the vertical shift. Okay, so this is saying that f of x was shifted up or down? Down, because it's negative, right? Seven spaces. Cool, so that's transformations. Now, let's talk about steepness, okay? 
steepness is the absolute value of m. What did m stand for? Slope, right? So we're going to take a look at the absolute value of the slope. So if I have, let's talk about what absolute value means. We've talked about this before a little bit, um, but we're really going to talk about it now. Remember, absolute value is the distance of a number from 0. So what would the absolute value of negative 5 be? Well, negative 5 is how many spaces away from 0? It's 5. So the absolute value of positive 5, or of negative 5, is positive 5. Well, how many spaces from 0 is positive 5? Still 5 spaces. Okay? So it's always a positive number. Distance is always positive. So you're going to take whatever the slope is, and we are going to make it positive. And then we just compare the numbers. Okay, the bigger the number, the steeper the slope. So let's look at these. Compare each of the lines and tell which line is steeper, f of x or g of x. So the first thing we have to do is compare their slopes. And remember, we're taking the absolute value of the slopes. So if we take the absolute value of 2, how many spaces away from 0 is 2? Two spaces. If we take a look at g of x, what's our slope for g of x? It's negative 5. So what is the absolute value of negative 5? It's positive 5. Which of those is larger, 2 or 5? 5. So we would say that g of x is steeper. Cool. Let's look at the next one. What's the slope for f of x? It's 3, negative 3. So what is the absolute value of negative 3? It's 3. What is the slope for g of x? It's negative 7. So what is the absolute value of negative 7? It's positive 7. So which line is steeper, f of x or g of x? Well, 7 is bigger than 3, so that means g of x is steeper. Even though negative 3 is technically larger than negative 7, we're looking at the difference in the rise, um, and that could be going up or going down. Direction doesn't matter, right? So that's why we take the absolute value of the slope. So let's look at the last one. For f of x, what is the absolute value of negative 4? It's 4. How about for g of x, the absolute value of 4? Still 4. So, how do these lines compare? They have the same steepness. That's a possibility. I could have a line with a slope of 4 going up and a line with a slope of 4 going down. Think about if we were going to, say, ski down this mountain, or skateboard down this mountain, or anything with gravity involved. <laughs> it wouldn't matter which side of the mountain we went off of, right? We would be rolling at the same speed because they have the same steepness, okay? Steepness is this incline. So if their distance from zero is the same, then they have the same steepness. Their incline would be the same. Let's try some practice problems.